uh, this week I'm excited. We're having um, a panel that's going to cover educational assistance with the tribe. <clears throat> and uh, we'll talk about all the ways that uh, folks that want to get higher education um, and, and advance through um, vocational school or other means. So um, again, I'm excited to be here. We have with us today Sarah Dibdahl. Sarah is the director of our Cultural Heritage and Education Department. Our Vocational Training Resource Center is under Sarah. Uh, we have Jesse Parr, who's the TANF manager. Teresa Sarabia, who is our Tribal Vocational Rehab uh, Manager. We have Christina Vasquez, who sees, oversees our scholarship program. And we have Barbara Cog from Employment and Training. Um, so this time of year, Clinton Haida, we're cheering on all of our tribal citizens, youth who have graduated from high school and are studying their next educational goals. And that's why we decided to feature our educational assistance programs and services today. Whether it be you who are interested in attending a trade school or college or university, we have several programs and services that can help. And it's not just high school seniors and, or graduates, you know, it's anybody who's in that uh, phase of life where they may want to either return to school or um, through some of our programs may have to get retrained for a new occupation. <clears throat> I'll quickly uh, go ahead and have uh, folks introduce themselves. I'll start with Sarah. Thank you, um, President Peterson. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Sarah Dipdahl. My Tlingit name is Anshawatki. I am originally from Klawak and have worked with Tlingit and Haida now just coming up on three years. Uh, as President Peterson said, I'm the Cultural Heritage and Education Director and just very honored to be here today. Great. Teresa? Hi, good afternoon. My name is Teresa Sarabia. I'm originally from Juneau, Alaska. I'm Dukteen Tanyetki. My Tlingit name is Dukteen. I run the Tribal Vocation Rehabilitation Program. Um, it's an honor to be here. Thank you, President Peterson. Good night, Chief. How are you? Thank you, Teresa. Christina? Hello, I'm Christina Vasquez. I work for Higher Education in the Vocational Training and Resource Center. And um, I am from Juneau. Great. Barbara? Thank you, President Peterson. Good afternoon. My name is Barbara Tog. I am Eagle Ducklawaity. I originate from Tenneke, where I was raised, um, spent my childhood, moved into Juneau in 1967, and have been with the tribe since 2004. Thank you. Jesse? Uh, thank you, President Pearson. Uh, my name is Jesse Barr. I'm the TANF program manager. Uh, I was born and raised in Juneau, Alaska, and I've been the TANF program manager for just shy of two years now. Great. So we'll go ahead and and I'm going to just uh, ask some of you some questions, help us uh, describe our programs and, and access to the programs for our citizens. And then afterwards, we're going to be taking some questions from those on uh, Facebook Live. And for those of you who have tuned in and are on Facebook Live and you like what, uh, hit the like button, at the end, you'll be entered in for an opportunity to win essentially uh, virtual door prizes. So uh, thank you all for joining us. Uh, why don't I go ahead and get started with Christina? Christina, can you provide us with an overview of the College Student Assistance Program and Alumni Scholarship? Um, what are the eligibility requirements? Is there a deadline to receive applications? How the funding amount is determined? Sure. <clears throat> so our main scholarship is our College Student Assistance. Um, this scholarship covers students who are seeking a degree to an accredited college, both full-time and part-time. Um, it also works for students who are doing online or distance ed. The, there's no deadline for this scholarship, so um, anybody can apply at any time. Uh, the only thing is, is we do not fund for summer terms. Um, the maximum 
a student can get for this scholarship is $3,000, which gets split between the terms. Um, we also have our alumni scholarship, and um, that is money that is earned off of fundraising. Um, so each year we do a little bit of fundraising for this pot of money, and then it gets split between however many students were found eligible. Uh, the first scholarship, the college student assistance that I mentioned, um, you do need to be enrolled with the tribe as well as the second uh, scholarship, the alumni. The uh, funding amounts for the alumni do change each year just because it is money that we are earning. It is um, one lump sum of money that a student can get and use for whatever they need, whereas the college student assistance it goes straight to the school um, to take care of their costs. And Christina, did you mention, um, you know, a lot of our programs are um, location-based service area. Now our alumni scholarship, does that fall under um, that or is it open to all citizens? <clears throat> oh, my apologies. Yes, it does. It is open to all citizens. Um, our college student assistance um, is not, though. It is only open to our compact service areas. Um, so that would be Juneau, um, Haynes. Um, sorry, drawing a blank here. Wrangell just pulled down. Um, Juno Haynes. I'm sorry. And Tenneke. And I think I missed one. So um the scholarship, the college student assistance um goes off a point system. Um, that's how we determine how much funds um, are distributed to each student. It looks at where your family originates from. It looks at where um, you went to high school and whether or not you might be enrolled with the tribes, the Alaska, um, or like gold belts. Um, so all those factors give you points and um, determine how much you're going to get. Great. Thanks for sharing, Christina. Uh, for those tuned in, just in case, if you see me break in and out, I'm actually not in Juneau. I'm, I'm in my home village of Kassan. And so, like most people in our villages, our connection's not always great. So, if I uh, come and go, that, that's why. And I'm sure Ray Ann will um, ably jump in and cover me if uh, I'm lost for a minute. So, thanks everybody for your patience there. Sarah, can you talk a little bit about how the alumni scholarship and how it is funded and how um, can people donate to the alumni scholarship? Yes, thank you. Um, so our alumni scholarship is, as Christina was stating, is um, it is all based on funds that Clink and Haida is able to fundraise for. And historically, um, you know, Clink and Haida was known for hosting the spring um, King Salmon Derby and we have moved away from doing that. We've done other fundraising options, you know, such as selling Krispy Kreme and um, doing the Only Fools Run at Midnight. Uh, this year, we were slated to actually do our fundraising uh, through the President's Banquet Award. Um, and due to our current circumstances with COVID, uh, that's been postponed. And so um, our alumni scholarship is based on what we're able to raise. Um, through fundraising and if individuals would like to support this and, and offer assistance, supplementary assistance to our college students, um, there is the ability to donate. Um, and Rayanne has it shared here on the screen of where you can make donations and any donations received for the alumni scholarship, we would be able to turn around and distribute to our students. Great. Can you um, talk a little bit about uh, 
a little bit of information on the cultural heritage and education's class survey that is running right now? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so on on uh, our social media and other places, you can find um, the survey that's being hosted by Klinke and Haida through SurveyMonkey. Um, this, the Cultural Heritage and Education Department put this survey together um, to really seek the input from our tribal citizens and communities about how to move forward with classes and opportunities um, for classes. Um, it's closes uh, actually this Sunday is the when the survey closes there's some great opportunities some great prizes for those that participate um, the survey when you take the survey and you go through it really the questions that are being asked um, are going to help us determine the interest level of the type of classes it's going to help us determine how to structure the classes, if there are um, the length of the classes, if our tribal citizens and communities would prefer weekend classes, um, condensed classes. Um, and so I, I hope individuals take the opportunity to go on and, and take the survey. Um, it closes Friday, some really great prizes, and we're just really excited about the feedback that we have received so far. Great. Barbara, for our tribal citizens who are not necessarily looking at a college or university, but are wanting to maybe attend a vocational or trade school, can you talk a little bit about the Employment and Training Department's training program and how they can help our tribal citizens? What, what are some of the eligibility requirements? How is the funding amount determined? Does Clinton Haida's training program provide financial assistance for up to a two-year degree? Yes, um, the eligibility requirements, they must be tribally enrolled and um, can demonstrate proof of the eligibility with the tribal enrollment certificate of Indian blood with the Bureau of Indian Affairs. They must have a high school diploma or GED. They must demonstrate application for other financial resources. They must be unemployed underemployed or economically disadvantaged. They must provide approval of probation or parole officer if on probation. They must demonstrate employment or ability to obtain employment based upon their training. And for males 18 to 25 years of age, they must provide proof of registration with the Selective Service. The um, two-year degree that we fund is for the associate um, degree. It is usually in a vocational field. Um, we provide services uh, for their tuition books, fees, supplies, in addition to that, we also provide services for their living expenses, travel, if they, the transportation, if they are seeking a school outside of the Juno area. We provide their food and their transportation and utilities. Um, the scholarship assistance is based on unmet need. Uh, it's important that any of our tribal citizens that are applying for school, they need to provide verification that they have um, seeked whatever scholarships they um, can. And the Bureau of Indian Affairs Regulation State, all they have to do is show that they have made it every effort to um, apply for scholarships and within that they have met the part of the application process. We um, provide, uh, one of the things that we are doing uh, for our tribal citizens, if they are wanting to go to a trade school or vocational school, oftentimes um, they're not quite sure if that is what their real 
desire is and it's what they feel at the moment but they're not sure themselves so as a academic counselor what i try to do is um, help our tribal applicants um, once they've been approved for the scholarship is try and get them into the apprenticeship program um, it gives us a little insight is as to their commitment for their education many of them have never been away from juno so a lot of these um uh, union apprenticeships are from the outlying areas. They'd be in Anchorage, Fairbanks. Fairbanks. Um, so, while they're attending these apprenticeships, the other things that we can provide for them, um, the apprenticeship programs, they may cover the tuition, but they may not cover anything else. So there again, we cover their hotel, lodging, food, transportation to and from. Uh, it varies for each apprenticeship program. Our local um, laborers, local 942, uh, they have a lot of jobs that um, many of our tribal citizens like to um, seek for employment so they do have their own application process we do the referral to them however before they um, go to the local 942 um, they are informed that if they do have a background that might be um, less than perfect if they have any felonies, uh, they will not be eligible for any apprenticeships through the local 942. I don't think that applies to all of the programs, but um, it's, they would just need to contact me and we would work together um, to see what their goal is. Great. Yeah, I, I know one of the frustrating things for a lot of our citizens is really uh, some of our programs that Clink and Hyder run um, are for only folks that reside in our service area. And a lot of people think, well, I'm a tribal citizen, you generate money on me. And, and the reality is we actually don't. We really only get money for the folks in the service area. And that's why it's been Clink and Hyder's goal through outside sources. We, we've been creating our own uh, businesses and economic opportunities so that we will no longer have to be limited by our service area that we could define for ourselves who we're going to serve and not you know be dictated through a program also uh, some of our village tribes receive their own ENT funding and so um, if you already you need to check in with your local tribe first and uh, if they can, you know, to see if they can help you or not, and then come to us. So, you know, there, there's, I, I totally understand some of the frustration we get from our tribal citizens, but I can tell you we're working really hard to uh, do away with these limitations and be, you know, self-determined. So I, I just wanted to put that out there because that's probably one of the most common questions I get as the president. Um, and, and again, we have nearly 32,000 tribal citizens. We do not get funding based on 32,000 tribal citizens. We, our funding is based on the citizens within our service area. <clears throat> Teresa, the Tribal Vocational and Rehabilitation Program has some really specific requirements. Can you talk about who TVR provides services to and what those eligibility requirements are? Teresa, you're on mute. Thanks, President Peterson. Apologies. They, uh, a tribal citizen must be enrolled in a federally recognized tribe. Our service area is Southeast Alaska. The only area we, uh, community we don't serve is Metlakatla, and that is because when we wrote the, uh, the grant application, they had a, a TBR program. Um, since then, they have not. So uh, I'm writing the new grant and hopefully uh, 
I can speak with some, someone in Matla County and see if they still need services. Um, the other thing is they, for tribal citizens, must have a physical or mental disability that interferes with their ability to do their current work or they need help maintaining uh, employment and they must reside in Southeast Alaska. They must be able to work. And what does it mean when we talk about um, their inability to perform the job that they're doing? If someone has hearing loss and they need hearing aids, we are an excellent program for that. The other piece that I do is that we work, or this uh, department works with Barb Tog and with Christina. We do joint services. And so it has been a great um, combination. So our money goes further when we have both programs working together. I am also have a strong partnership with the state of Alaska, Department of Vocational Rehabilitation, and we do joint cases. So there's there can be up to three of us that split the cost because education is um, an expense that some of our tribal citizens, if they have a traumatic brain injury, or they have a loss of a limb, or they have a severe um, uh, disabilities that interfere with trying to stay in the job that they're in, education is key to getting them back into the work site. So uh, the services themselves are designed to achieve an employment outcome. Great. Yeah, I, I know you provide a, a tremendously important service and I've had the uh, pleasure to talk to some of our clients and you know sometimes when they come to us, especially for your program, they've they've kind of lost a lot of hope um, and a lot of people don't realize that these programs are out there you know um, where if you have any kind of disability uh, you know we can probably help you and work with you and uh, it, I'm just kind of marveled by what we can do I know you've even helped people with prosthetics right we do, exactly. If you have a loss of limb and you need help, we will partner with Department of uh, Vocational Re Rehabilitation State because that's a huge expense, but we'll get you to where you need to go. The other thing I heard is yeah, Barb's I, a CDL, and we are just working with a young man who wants to get his CDL back, and he has um, uh, been, because of... Uh, violations and because of substance abuse he is waiting five years so it's sometimes it's five years before you can get your cdl back and we're working with him in december yeah we'll help him get some of the um breathalyzers that he needs for his car and he has to wait six months and then he can get his cdl back so there's a lot of things that we can help as long as it's about work and you can't do the job that you're currently in or you are trying to get back because of um, social issues we're here to help yeah and and to me that brings up you know we may not always have the capacity or the the program may not have the capacity to, to help you but you know our folks really know um their uh different agencies their peers on it there and i know Teresa works with many different agencies and if we we ourselves aren't able to help you we can usually point you in the right direction and I think it's important if, if you're a citizen and, and you need help, you know, the worst case scenario is we, we can say no, but, you know, you never know what we might be able to say yes to. So I think it's really important to reach out and, and make those connections with our uh, caseworkers and things. And again, you know, we're working to make sure that our caseworkers are there to assist you beyond just what we can offer as a tribe, but what other agencies can help with. Exactly. Jesse. Oh, there, go ahead, Teresa. There are so many um, people out there that are willing to help people with disabilities. We work with JAMI, which is Juno Alliance for Mental Illness. We work with uh, Mental Health Trust. You can get a mini grant through them for a small business. Um, you can also work with them if you're having trouble getting into or maintaining your rent. Uh, mental health trust is a huge help to uh, many of our tribal citizens uh, wanting to get back um, into the workforce and our supports for what they need daily. So there are a lot of people that are out there to help and we do hook them up. Blind services is another one. If someone is, um, we have someone just recently who has monocular uh, 
uh, disease of the eyes and that person will go blind soon. So they worked with um, the blind services up in Anchorage because that is a tough uh, disability, but we don't leave them uh, alone. We help them through the process. So um, there are so many things that in Juneau and throughout the uh, Southeast that we help with community rehab providers. We help people with one-on-one um, -on -one services. Um, I contract with um, David Belton, who is awesome. He is an ex uh, DVR counselor and has one of the best services in Southeast. He has actually gone to Ketchikan for us. And so if we can't get you there, then we'll get them to you. So we're excited about our services. So if you think you have a disability, mental or physical disability, please don't hesitate to contact our offices. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Teresa. And uh, you can hear, I think you can hear the uh, passion that Teresa has. Um, she's very passionate about helping our, our people. And, and she knows that, again, I'm going to repeat myself, what Clink and Hyda might not be able to do, we can at least try to connect you with those resources. And I think that's so important. And, you know, one of the things I want to stress is if you're going through these resources that aren't Clink and Hyda's, but you feel overwhelmed, reach out and we may not be able to offer the service, but we can help you navigate other services. So, um, yeah, and I just love Teresa's passion. So thank you, Teresa. One other thing, President Peterson, one other thing I wanted to mention, one of the things that we have helped is outside tribal citizens that are located um, not in Alaska. We've tried to hook them up to the local tribal folk rehab departments down in the, um, with other tribes. So that has helped them. So we've heard back from some of them and they're getting great services. So please don't hesitate to call great. us. We'll hook you up. Thank you. I, absolutely. That's one of the things I feel blessed uh, uh, being the president of Clique and Haida is, you know, if you look across this panel that's before you today, uh, we're passionate about helping our citizens and, and we're, we're here to be that resource. So thank you. Uh, let's turn to Jesse. Jesse manages our TANF program. And so Jesse, with these specific educational assistance services, how does TANF fit into the picture and work with other services? Oh, thanks, President Peterson. Um, TANF really tries to coordinate with everyone on this panel, um, in addition to many other uh, partners throughout the Southeast community. The uh, Temporary Assistance, TANF is an acronym for the Temporary Assistance for Needy Families Program, um, and we serve low-income families uh, everywhere in Southeast, with the exception of Malakala. Uh, we have approximately 100 single-parent families and 50 two-parent uh, families at any given time. And uh, all of those individuals are required to do some type of uh, work participation, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. We're really trying to encourage uh, educational pursuits, um, whether it's online training um, or any type of you know, training that they're able to do through uh, any educational system. Um, we have offices in Ketchikan, Sitka, and Juneau, and so I have a total of four workforce development specialists uh, work with families to create an individual plan, but uh, for their becoming self-sufficient. But prior to them uh, doing that plan, we do a general assessment, and uh, based off of that assessment, we encourage people to uh, pursue whatever venture, you know, vocational pursuits or academic pursuits that you know, might help them to be self-sufficient. Um, and so, a lot of people receive training uh, along under Sarah's department. Um, other people might be referred to Barb if they have any type of uh, you know, questions about a labor union or uh, training there. Uh, we have you know, such a wide variety of clients that uh, we do a lot of uh, partnering with the Southeast Regional Resource Center or CERC for GED training um, or even the uh, University of Alaska system for people getting their master's degree. So we have a wide variety of things. And then, once people actually obtain their uh, education that they're looking for, we're also able to do different things like on the job training or uh, work experience to really try to get their foot in the door. We can offer some type of uh, you know, subsidy to an employer to uh, give a leg up and let them get some actual on the job experience before they you know, have to test the labor market by themselves. 
Um, and also the, the social enterprises that you mentioned earlier have really been great to just get people into that day-to-day -day routine and uh, to help them learn different you know, on-the-job training skills there. So how about your program? Are you able to work with folks outside of the service area or are you still pretty confined to the service area? Uh, we're, you know, we have allowable absences. So if someone uh, needs to say, go to Anchorage for, uh, or Avtech and Seward, um, we can allow people to leave the, the service area, but um, otherwise people need to be living in uh, Southeast Alaska or have the intent to return to Southeast Alaska. We've also had a, families that say needed to um, receive alcohol or uh, drug treatment that wasn't available in Southeast, but uh, certain facilities in Anchorage are able to have children and um, are more family friendly. And, and we've been able to provide assistance while they're uh, receiving that, uh, that type of treatment, or if they're also to, you know, to be pursuing some type of educational pursuit that's not available in Southeast, we can, we, can, we have some flexibility there. Great. Yeah. And again, I know where we can't help, we, we want to be the resource and connecting people. And that's, you know, just our first step. And, but again, with our economic development, our hope is in the coming years, we'll be able to do more to serve our tribal citizens wherever they live. You know, um, we know that just because you don't live uh, in the service area doesn't make you any less Clinket or Haida. So that's kind of become our mantra, uh, trying to find ways to serve our people wherever they are. And, you know, it's a slow process and, and we know it's frustrating and we certainly aren't passing the buck. This is something we take very seriously and working towards. Ray Ann, have we gotten any uh, questions online? Um, yeah, we did. We actually have a few that came in, uh, just two so far. and. It looks like both of them are for uh, Christina and in regards to the college student assistance program. One online viewer already answered the question for um, Kinsey, but I figured for, for the greater viewers, it would still be good for Christina to answer it. But Kinsey Andra Martin asked if uh, there's assistance for master's degree. So Christina, if you wouldn't mind answering her. Yes, we actually assist students anywhere from an AA and up. So all the way up to a PhD. Great. Um, and then another one is just a more specific question. It looks like maybe somebody is applying. Mary Marks is wondering if it's best to send her college transcripts to you or the higher ed email address. Either are fine because both go right to me, so. Okay. Great. Well, um, we're still taking questions. We have some time left. So if there are any other questions, please go ahead and just um, just enter them in the comments section of the Facebook Live event right now. And we'll, we'll uh, just kind of keep monitoring to see if anything comes up. And maybe um, while that's happening, um, we were going to save this for the end. But if we if we want to, I think right now is kind of a good time for us to see if any questions come in and then also kind of celebrate some of our um, high school graduates who have submitted their photos for um, our Facebook album. So I'm just going to switch ahead to a few slides. Um, these are just some of the high school graduates that have uh, submitted photos to us. So um, this is still a Facebook album that we are uh, maintaining. So if anyone wants to submit a photo, uh, any tribal citizen, we are glad to post your photo to the album. And it's just a small thing that we like to do every year to just help celebrate our, our high school graduates and um, just cheer them on. So these are just some of our recent graduates and of course they this year has been a, a different year for them in in graduating so we just want to give a shout out to them thank you for submitting 
If you um, do have a tribal citizen or you are a tribal citizen that that would like to submit a photo and some information on just your where you graduated, your your goals, um, go ahead and just either message us through Facebook or submit them through our uh, communications email address. So we just wanted and to give a quick shout out there. Yep. And Rayanne, let me uh, throw a little kicker in there. One of the things that we do, this is an annual event. We try to recognize our um, graduates and we think it's so awesome for our youth to make that, complete that journey through high school. And we know that sometimes that's not the easiest journey. And so it's something really worth uh, acknowledging and holding them up. And uh, what I want to do this year, starting this year, and we'll start doing this every year, uh, well, if you if you submit a picture of your youth, and uh, <clears throat> we will in June randomly draw two for each one will get a four hundred fifty dollar uh, either cash card or check uh, to help them along in their path. So. Uh, Rayanne didn't know about this, and I wanted to throw a little surprise at folks. But if you continue to um, submit your graduate's photo, and you can private message us uh, contact information, we'll, again, we'll randomly draw two $450 cash winners. And I just got a question sent to me uh, by text. Does Central Council help the next year with preparation for standardized tests at the undergrad or grad level. So SAT, SAT or GRE. Not that we support standardized testing, but some schools still require it. So it, can somebody tackle that question? Anybody? Uh, it looks like perhaps maybe somebody, if you guys have something to say, you want to make sure to unmute. I'm going to put this on our chat for all panelists so you can see it. Sarah, are you able to tackle that? Yeah, so I, I was looking to see, President Peterson, I don't know um, if we do provide that. I think that's a question that Christina, I can follow up with Christina because the SAT and the GRE, um, the SAT, the most students are taking those, you know, in, in their high school years. Um, I do think that is a great question about how to support students that are pursuing their higher education. I do not have the question or the answer right offhand, though. Okay. My apologies, Margo. That's okay. One of the things that we commit to is if we don't have the answer readily available and you ask it, we will, um, research and provide that answer. So afterwards, uh, again, I'm in the village, so I can't get on Facebook and the Zoom at the same time. I'll, I'll personally post that question to our Facebook page so that we can come back and answer it. Have we uh, gotten any other questions, Rayanne? Yep, yep, we have. Um, so we also have a question in from Mona Evan. She was wondering if, uh, housing assistance is still a part of our programs. So I do not offer housing assistance for my program. Barbara, and it looks like Barbara, you'll have to unmute if you wanna say something. Okay. I too also provide housing assistance. Um, you know, if they're living at home and um, they are paying rent, um, they can provide a shelter statement to me. Uh, if they are living in their own housing by themselves, uh, all we need is a, a lease. 
and uh, we provide the full help with the housing. Great. Hi, this is Teresa. Go ahead, Teresa. I, we also um, help with housing only if they're in training. Um, Barb, uh, mm -hmm. Tina, and even Tanif and myself, uh, we all uh, will split the cost for that because that can get expensive. And so again, um, we do joint services behind the scenes. Um, sometimes uh, uh, lots of uh, our tribal citizens don't know that, but uh, once we get together and we know that they have um, access to that, it's considered comparable services with my program. So we do work in cohort together. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Great, thank you, Teresa. Uh, we do have a few more questions that came in. Um, so there was one question from Mariah Kalam, wondering if the, we're going to be doing the backpack giveaway this year, um, you know, with regard to the COVID changes and whatnot. So Jesse, is that something you can answer? Um, I can't answer it uh, definitively, but we're, we're tentatively making plans. Um, and we haven't uh, requested permission from President Pearson uh, at this time. We, we're just we're still trying to see how the state uh, reacts to this kind of new reopening that we're going through. Um, I know historically we've had the back to school backpack uh, distributions in Juneau at the EP Hall, and we're definitely not planning to um, ask that many families to be confined indoors. And we're making tentative plans to do something outdoors. Uh, where we're able to you know, properly keep everyone separated and, uh, and uh, we're also trying to you know, figure out how we can have staff uh, work indoors to uh, stuff that many backpacks. Last year we were really fortunate to be able to partner with Office Max and they, they did a lot of uh, a lot of the heavy lifting when it comes to putting school supplies in uh, different backpacks and things like that and uh, we've reached out to them again this year, but we haven't been uh, notified either way. We're also doing some cost estimates for uh, electronic things that might be more relevant for, uh, I guess, the, uh, the new, new type of education that uh, the kids are looking at, where they're going to be working from home more and more. So we're, we're also kind of dependent on what the uh, school districts throughout Southeast uh, determine to do for education as well. So uh, everything's kind of undecided at this point. Great, thank you, Jesse. Um, we also have a question that came in from Jessica Domini. She was wondering if college assistance, if you have to live in Southeast Alaska to receive college assistance. Christina? For our college student assistance program, you do not have to live here. Um, we look at where your family originates from within Southeast Alaska. We recognize a lot of students go out of, out of Juneau, um, or out of Alaska for um, their higher education needs. Great. For the 477 program, um, two-year degree program, you do need to um, be residing in one of our service areas for um, assistance. Thank you, Barbara. Well, and again, that just illustrates kind of the complexities which we're trying to operate. Mm -hmm. We have similar programs that have different requirements. And I think it's, it's great. Thank you, Jessica, for raising the question. Um, we, I think it's just so important for people not to feel like they don't get served um, and just not ask. So it's better to ask and, and hopefully we can find a way that we can. And again, we're just, we're still working on you know, our economic development so that we can define for ourselves who we serve and how we serve. And so, um, you know, we continue to ask people to bear with us and, and we're doing uh, all we can to change this paradigm of uh, one day we won't even use the term service area is my hope. And I also want to jump in on the backpack question. Um, I think, and thank you, Jesse, uh, you did a good job. Uh, for me, you know, as Jesse says, uh, the decision hasn't come down for me yet. And for me, um, 
the reality is we're it's a wait and see game right now i still imagine we're doing it but um we're gonna see what happens i know here in the state of alaska it looks like they're um working to uh remove the uh, 14-day quarantine the kind of open it uh we're the first state to fully reopen uh i hope and pray that is uh successful and and doesn't set us backwards i think uh the coming weeks are really going to tell us what things are going to look like or the coming school year we're in close uh conversation with school districts and and seeing what's happening um whether school is done at home or or back in the, the schoolhouse we're going to do something for our youth I, I can promise you that whether it's backpacks or not as jesse said we're going to look you know and i commend jesse and his leadership there because he's looking at uh you know if kids are staying at home then maybe we do online subscriptions for them or or we, or we provide other kind of more uh applicable services so um i'll just say stay tuned right now okay uh we'll probably just take uh maybe two more questions since we're getting close to finishing up the hour and we want to make sure we leave some time to do a random drawing so um let's see the the next question i see is from erica george she mm -hmm said, if I was a recipient for 2020 spring, do I have to apply again for fall and spring semester? And I'm thinking that's a Christina question. I do believe that is a question for me. And um, no, we just send out a form that just asks if you're re um, going to be uh, attending school this next academic year, and then you just return that form. So you do not need to um, fill out a new application. Great. Okay, and then there's a question that came in, um, and and this relates to our tribal citizens living in, in the Seattle area and, and largely um, outside of what is considered our service area, but Rhonda Fall, she asked, what kind of help for people living is, in Seattle area uh, is there for her or others to go back to college? My program, um, again, would look at where your family originates from. So just because they're in Seattle doesn't mean they wouldn't be eligible. Um, so it would just be a matter of figuring out which community within Southeast Alaska um, they come from. Okay. And of course, we can also do referrals to um, the tribes that are closest to them so that they can apply or seek resources through the tribe that they uh, reside closest to. Hi, Rianne, this is Teresa. I agree that they can contact the local tribal voc rehab programs within Washington State. They can also go to the state DVR uh, if they have a disability and get support and training through um, the state programs also. Thank you. Great, thank you. Okay, so I think that's that's all the questions we're going to be able to get to today. So um, our our next thing that we're going to be doing is actually our there we go random drawing time. So we have um, a hydro flask, and it has our sacred grounds logo on it, and Oh, let's see. There we go. And then we also, this time, we only did uh, last week one drawing, but we're going to do two today. So we also have a uh, Superman form line design shirt that was made uh, by David Boxley Jr. So we have these two items that we're going to be doing a, a drawing for. So if you haven't already, we're going to just give you a few seconds. So go ahead and like this Facebook Live event. And I have Sam that's going to be doing a random drawing and will be giving us two names here in just a few minutes. So while we do that, we will um, we'll have some names here for you shortly. And I think President Peterson is gonna actually 
be the person to announce the names here in just a moment. Great. And the form line shirt is by David Robert Boxley. Thank you for the clarification on that. Oh, we got lots of likes coming in. Good. Okay, looks like the first name has come in, President Peterson. Has it been sent to me? Oh, let's see. Looks like maybe it was only sent to me. I'll go ahead and go ahead. read it then. So our first winner is Betsy M. Davey. Congratulations. And our second winner is T.A. Star. So congratulations to you both. Betsy, you won the Hydra Flask and T.A. Star, you won the uh, Superman form line t-shirt. So if um, you're still online, please make sure to message us your uh, mailing address and we'll get your prizes in the mail today. So that, uh, that wraps it up for our random drawing. And President Peterson, if you have anything you want to say to close up. Yep. Well, I just want to thank all of the panelists for uh, participating today. Um, we're again, and this is an opportunity for our tribal citizens to uh, get to know our, not just the programs, but the folks that run these programs, who's on the other end of that email or, or the phone or however you're reaching out to us. Um, and again, you know, we're really uh, proud of all of you who are pursuing your higher education or, or looking for a new occupation. And so we want to be that resource for you, whether it's directly or where we can help you navigate the system. <clears throat> I want to say good cheese how to everybody for joining us today. We, I hope you enjoyed it. Um, and I hope that you find this useful. We're, we're going to continue doing these. Uh, it'll be a weekly event every Thursday. And it's just, again, a way to learn about the tribe's activities, programs, and services. Um, next week, we'll be talking about financial assistance services. Uh, I know in the coming weeks, we're going to have our executive council available for one so that you can um, hear from them just what it is that they're doing, uh, what, what their advocacy is, and you can ask them questions. And then I know census is um, is happening right now, and we'll be having us uh, one on how, how to do the census. Um, many of you may have already done it, but we've seen the numbers, and unfortunately, uh, only about 40% of our communities have responded, and we really, we need to push that, and uh, Alaska Native, Native Americans are often uh, far under, um, represented in the census and the census really helps uh, communities get the funding dollars to operate programs and essential needs so it's really important that we get accurate numbers and so we'll be having those and our other programs and again i just want to thank you all for tuning in thank our panelists they did an outstanding job um, i think every one of them is just uh, really dedicated to the mission and improving uh, the lives of our citizens. Um, they, they really, this job is more than a job to all of them. And I think we're very fortunate to have this team. So again, have a good day, be well, be safe, and that's it.